transcribed. Now listen to Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young, his father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Crosley, makers of pace-setting products for happier living. Crosley Automatic Television. Oh, boy. Beautiful Crosley Shelvador Refrigerators, the world's most convenient. Wonderful Crosley Automatic Electric Ranges. Crosley Shelvador Freezers, Color Style Radios, and many other leading home appliances. <laughs> Magnetism, according to Webster, is defined as the power to attract. For example, a hurdy-gurdy on a street corner has magnetism. A knothole in the fence of a baseball field has magnetism. So has a construction project and a wet paint sign. But in the kitchen of a certain white frame house on Maple Street, the most effective magnetism known to man is in the process of being generated. The method? Quite simple. Margaret Anderson just puts a couple of eggs and a few cups of sugar in a mixing bowl and cranks up the egg beater. The magnetic sound waves go out and the results are instantaneous. Like this. Hi, Mommy. What are you making? A cake. Whose birthday is it? Nobody's. Well, then why are you making a cake? Do I have to have a special reason to make a cake? Well, no, but... I just felt in the mood for making a cake, that's all. When I get through, you can lick the frosting out of the bowl. No, thanks. What? I have to watch my figure. <laughs> Your figure? At school today, Teddy Wilson called me chubby. Oh, oh, nonsense. You aren't chubby. You're just nice and round. That's what he said. I was nice and round like a barrel. <laughs> well, I wouldn't let it bother me. Hmm... Not a bad-looking cake, even if I do say so myself. Mommy? Yes? Do high heels really make your legs look slimmer? Kathy, stop worrying about it. Hi, Mother. Hello, Betty. Mother, the most wonderful thing is... What's the idea of the cake? Whose birthday is it? It's nobody's birthday. I just took it upon myself to make a cake. I knew it was going to upset the household like this. I'd have made a rice pudding or something. I couldn't eat that either. What do you think, Mother? I couldn't guess. I analyzed Harvey Blake's handwriting, and we're compatible. Isn't that luscious? Analyzed his handwriting? Yes. Do you know that book I got through the mail? And today in class, I got one of Harvey's compositions, and I brought it home, and I just finished analyzing it. We're soulmates. <laughs> Well, if the analysis shows it, I'm sure it must be right. Oh, but it does. My writing leans forward and his leans backwards. We're made for each other. <laughs> Sounds like true love. Don't make fun, Mother. His writing reveals that he's the strong, silent type. Likes to keep to himself, sort of antisocial. And that's good? Of course. Now when we pass each other in the hall and he looks the other way, I won't feel bad. I'll know he's just hiding his true feelings. <coughs> Mommy. Yes, dear? When I grow up, will I weigh 300 pounds? <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, are you still worrying about that? What's the matter with Grumpy Puss? You wouldn't understand. Mother, what in the well, world? Let's just forget about it. I'll bet I'll look terrible in a bathing suit next summer. What is she moaning about? Oh, somebody happened to call her chubby and her whole life is ruined. Very, very pitiful. Nine years old and all washed up. <laughs> you stay out of this. I was only... Children. Margaret, I'm home. Daddy! Hi, Father. Well, what is the feminine faction up to now? Hello, dear. Margaret, I was... A cake. Who's... It's nobody's birthday. <laughs> How did you know I was going to ask that? I don't know. Just psychic, I guess. Daddy! Yes, kitten? Do you love me? Sure I love you. Will you always love me, no matter what happens? Why, certainly. What's this all about? She's worried about her figure. Nobody asked you. 
I don't get it. Oh, somebody called her chubby at school, and she's making a big thing out of it. Come here, kitten. Yes, Daddy? You aren't chubby, and besides, I'll always love you. Even if I waddle when I walk? <laughs> <laughs> Even if you waddle when you walk. Uh, where's Bud? Over at the Richardson's. I brought home a surprise for him. What is it, Father? Where is it? Come on outside, and I'll show you. It's in the driveway. Jumping creepers, a motor scooter. Just what he wanted. Isn't that a dandy? Complete with a bulb horn. <laughs> Jim, you aren't giving that to Bud. I didn't get it for myself. But he isn't ready for that. Margaret, the boy has to... You yourself have been dead set against it. It was only last month that you told Bud he couldn't have a motor scooter. Well, that was last month. He's older now. <laughs> Oh, yes. He's aged in the last 30 days. Now, Margaret. No, Jim, I won't have it. But wait till you hear the terrific buy I got on it. It was advertised on the office bulletin board by one of the fellows, and I grabbed it up. He wanted $30 for it, and I talked him into letting me have it for $25. $25? $25. $25? Oh, yeah. Reading from left to right, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Think of the curtains I could buy with $25. Think of the formal I could buy. Think of the... Stop it. Bud will get the scooter, and that will be that. I won't stand for it, Jim. Margaret, the boy's at the age where he needs to take on some responsibility. I agree, but not a motor scooter. You know, what tickled me about the whole deal was that Fred Hartley wanted it for his kid, and I beat him to it. Fred fancies himself as a sharp operator. He's always bragging about how he got such a wonderful buy on this and that, and... Well, it just did my heart good. Jim, don't try to sidetrack the issue. I'm not sidetracking any issue. I'm just pointing out that whether you realize it or not, it's a wonderful buy at $25. $25? 25 That's enough, girls. <laughs> what do you say, Margaret? I've already said it, and that's final. But when the poor kid sees it, and then we tell him he can't have it, he'll be heartbroken. He won't see it. You can hide it from him tonight and then take it with you when you go to work in the morning. Oh, but I can just see Bud's eyes light up. His radiant smile, a glow... Stop getting dramatic, Jim. The answer is still no. Hey, where is everybody? Anybody home? That's him now. Hurry, girls. Run in the house and head him off. Go on, Kathy. Quick, Jim. Hide it. Where? Push it into the garage. The garage? Jim, you're just stalling so he'll see it. I am not. It... Uh... Push is kind of hard. Well, release the brake or something. I'm trying to, but I don't quite understand where the... <laughs> Jim, you did that on purpose. I did not. It's getting dark. I can't see. <laughs> now, I'm going to run into the house before he suspects something. Hurry, Jim. All right. Hi, Mom. I was just coming outside to... Well, wash your hands, bud. Dinner will be on the table in five minutes. What's going on outside? Oh, nothing exciting. Why was everybody out there? Bud, your father came home and we went out to greet him. Why? <laughs> Bud, I'm in a big hurry. Please don't stand there asking questions. Get ready for dinner. Okay, but what's going on? Your father came home. He always comes home. <laughs> Bud, go get washed. Okay, okay. Uh, where is he? In the bathroom. Where'd you hide it? In the garage. I put a piece of canvas over it. Good. I still think it's a dirty trick. A scooter's the one thing in the world a boy really wants. And... Jim, we're eating right away. Honey. Yes? May I make one final plea? Go ahead. Can't Bud have the... No. <laughs> final? Final. Come on, girls. Sit down at the table. I won't be sitting at the table tonight. What was that, Kathy? All I'm going to have is some lettuce. <laughs> Kathleen, take your place at the table. I don't want to sit down. Kathy? Gee whiz. Hiya, Dad. Hello, bud. I know something, but I won't tell. Kathy. <laughs> what gives? There's something fishy going on. Daddy. Yes, Mother? We're waiting for you. Coming. Father, the most wonderful thing has just happened. I just finished analyzing your handwriting. You what? I analyzed your handwriting. And you know what? No, what? You are a very distinct personality. 
Is that good? It's sensational. According to the book, your handwriting reveals that you are the domineering type. You rule your family with an iron hand and always have your way. <laughs> Betty. Yes, Father? Return the book and get your money back. <laughs> In what one place would you expect to find a prime minister, a glamorous movie star, a heavyweight championship contender? Why, right in your own living room. Yes, television continually brings into your home the most exciting personalities of our time. And you'll enjoy their company much more with the world's leading television set, Crosley Automatic Television. But convince yourself that Crosley automatically gives you the finest performance in all television. At your Crosley dealer, turn on a set. See how Crosley does these five jobs for you automatically. One, the Crosley automatic power control brings in even distance stations with amazing clearness. Two, the Crosley picture lock automatically gives you the steadiest picture you've seen on any set. Three, the Crosley Interference Control automatically provides the most disturbance-free picture you've ever watched. Four, Crosley's special antenna selector automatically tunes to the channel you select. Five, Crosley automatically matches picture and sound. When the picture's right, the sound's right, thanks to Crosley's exclusive unit tuner. Yes, Crosley television is five ways automatic to help bring you the clearest, brightest, steadiest picture in television. Crosley leads the way in performance, styling, value, and the biggest cash savings in history. So don't wait any longer to enjoy the world of wonderful television entertainment a Crosley can bring into your living room. See your Crosley dealer tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, for the dear old days when father ruled the family domain and his every word was law. In that bygone age of glory, a man could buy his son a horse and there were no questions asked. But alas, times have changed, and so has the horse. Today, it's a motor scooter, hidden under canvas in a corner of the Anderson's garage, a burning secret which is fast scorching a hole in the willpower of the youngest Anderson. Like this. Bye. Huh? Bud! Kathy, say what you have to say. Bud! What do you want? I just wanted to ask you a question. What? Will you get my roller skates for me? Roller skates? What for? You can't skate now, dear. It's bedtime. Oh, I just want them, that's all. Where are they? In the garage. Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong, Daddy? Stop that foolish talk and get up to bed. Okay, I'm off for bed. Chug, 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 beep, beep, chug, chug, beep. <laughs> oh. She's only a child, dear. Yes, and she certainly works at it. <laughs> Bud, may I see the first section of the paper? Bud, your father is talking to you. Father? Yes, the one who rules his family with an iron hand. <laughs> he would like to look at the first section of the paper. Just a second, Dad. Hanson's Hardware has an ad in here. Won't do you any good, Bud. Christmas is over. Oh, here's something I sure wish I had. Yes, Bud? We've got a garage, and it sure would be swell. Margaret, the boy wants... No, Jim. What is it you want, Bud? This basketball hoop. I could put it on the garage door. Oh. Maybe something can be worked out one of these days. Bud. Yes, Dan? The first section, please. Oh, yeah. Here. What in the world do you do to the paper when you read it? Nothing. I just look through it, that's all. Well, it didn't get this way by itself. What do you mean? Look at it, all crumpled up, torn, the pages out of order, and page two and three stuck together with jam or something. What kind of jam? <laughs> How many people read this paper anyway? By the time it gets around to me, it looks like it's going through a cat fight. What about your homework, bud? I've got some. That's what I thought. Better get up to your room and get started. Okay. 
The coast is clear, Jim. Do you really want me to do it? Let's not go into that again. Well, all right. I feel like a fool calling Fred Hartley. I know he'll ask me why after all the trouble I went through. Hello? Uh, Fred, this is Jim. Jim Anderson from the office. Oh, hi, Jim. Fred, about that motor scooter I got today... Yeah? I uh, know you wanted it for your boy, so I'm going to let you have it. What's the matter? Is it falling apart? <laughs> no, it hasn't fallen apart. I've decided that... I mean, we've decided that we're going to wait a little longer before giving Bud a scooter. Oh, I see. And, Fred, I'll let you have it for the same price I paid for it. $25. $25? That's right. How about making it 20 But I put out $25 cash for it. $20. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, Fred. I'll split the difference. Twenty-two fifty. No, twenty. Here we go. What's the matter, dear? He's starting to haggle. He doesn't want to pay my price. Hey, father. Betty, can't you see I'm on the phone? Uh, just a second, Fred. How much will he pay? Twenty dollars. I'm sorry, father. Betty, please. How much did you say, Jim? Twenty dollars. Good, I'll take it. No, Fred, I you would really just. You really ought to thank me for taking it off your hands. But Fred, I bring it down to the office in the morning, and I'll have the money for you. All right, Fred. I'll see you in the morning. Goodbye. Goodbye. Father. Don't tell me you've analyzed my handwriting and it shows I'm a shrewd operator and I drive a hard bargain. <laughs> Hi, Mother. What did Father bring home tonight? I don't know. He isn't home yet. Have you had time to iron my blouse? Not yet. Oh, Mother. You know where the iron is, and the cord, and the floor plug. I haven't got time right now. Well, I'm swamped with time. All I have to do is sprinkle these clothes, take in the rest of the clothes off the line, straighten up the living room, mend Bud's pants, and start dinner. I haven't a whole hour to do it in. But, Mother... Margaret, I'm home. I'm in the kitchen, Jim. Hi, Father. I'll be back in a few minutes. Hello, honey. Hello, dear. Bring home any more surprises tonight? Surprises? Well, I looked at a fur coat for you. What? But I thought it would only lead to grief, so I left it in the store window. Oh, that was very considerate of you, dear. I could just picture what would happen. The fur would make the rest of your clothes look shabby. I'd have to get a new wardrobe. And then with a the new wardrobe and coat, you'd want to be seen in the better places. And that would call for a new car. Two new cars. We'd get into debt deeper and deeper. I'd start working nights to make more money, and then due to overwork, my health would fail, and I'd lose my job. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to keep our home, and Betty and Bud and you would have to go out and get work. And then finally... Jim. We'd... Yes, dear? I don't know how to thank you for not buying me that fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nothing that any thoughtful husband wouldn't have done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how'd you make out with Fred Hartley? He has the scooter. $20? $20. It nearly broke my heart. Well, Jim, after all, you only lost five dollars. I'm thinking about Bud. It doesn't matter to him, dear. This whole thing has come and gone without Bud knowing anything about it. I know, but I figured it would be one of the real big events in his life. Like the time my dad gave me my first two-wheel bike. Well, I remember the day, Jim. He rode it over to my house. That's right, I did. And then we went riding through the park with me on the handlebars. And to show off, I rode no hands and we plowed into a park bench. <laughs> but I didn't mind. I'll never forget how tenderly you picked me up. And then you held my hand and looked into my eyes and said, Hey, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, bud. Well, back to reality. I'm going out and haul in the rest of the clothes. Say, bud. Yeah, Dad? Uh, pull up a chair. What's the matter? Is something wrong? No. Should there be something wrong? No. But what is? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, bud. Okay. Now, uh, um, this is just something between the two of us. Here. Ten dollars? I want you to have it. But, Dad... I had sort of a refund on a little deal today, and I want to split it with you. That's your half. What's the catch? <laughs> no catch. You mean, I don't have to clean the basement for the next 12 years? <laughs> no, nothing like that. I know. I have to keep the car washed and polished until 1953. Bud. Yes, Dad? Can I just give you $10 with no strings attached? Well, sure, but... You mentioned something about wanting a basketball hoop. 
Now maybe you can get a new basketball, too. I'll sure find a place for it, Dad. Thanks a lot, but I still don't... Hello, Daddy. I didn't know you were home already. Hello, kitten. What was that bud just put in his pocket? Uh, nothing. I'll, I'll see you later, Dad. Mm -hmm. What was it, Daddy? It looked like money. <laughs> Here you go, Kathy. A dime for me? For you. Besides my regular allowance? That's right. Gee, Daddy, you sure are. What am I supposed to do for it? I must have a reputation for being an awful tightwad. Oh, I didn't mean that, Daddy. Can't I just give you some money because I want to? Oh, thank you. You're a wonderful Daddy. Thank you. You're the best Daddy in the whole world. Well, hearing you say that, Kathy, is worth all the dimes in the world. I mean it, Daddy. I know you do. How much did you give, Bud? <laughs> uh, never mind. Kathy, open the door for me. Oh, all right, Mommy. This basket of clothes is heavy. Here, let me help you. Uh, thank you. Huh. Kathy, why don't you go out and pick up the clothespins I dropped on the ground? I knew I wasn't getting this dime for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, I feel a lot better. I ease my conscience with Bud. But, Jim, you didn't have to feel obligated to him. How much did you give him? I know I wasn't obligated, but the whole matter straightened out, and I'm relieved. How much did you give him? Kathy, it's no concern of yours. Was it about the motor scooter? Kitten, be a good girl. Didn't I just give you a dime? Yes. Well? The water pistol I want costs a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. What a shakedown. I didn't ask you for it. I know, but if your methods ever get around, you'll be up for investigation. <laughs> Kathy. Yes, Mommy? The clothespins, remember? But I've got something real important to do, Mommy. I'm and... going to iron my blouse now, Mother. Not now, Betty. It's time for you to set the table. Chomping creepers. All right. Come on, Kathy. You've got to help. Oh, I've got to pick up those clothespins. Who was that magician that could disappear and nothing flat? Houdini. There went the new champ. <laughs> Hand me those dishes, will you please, Father? Mm-hmm. Here you go. Thanks. Analyze any interesting handwriting lately? Oh, that. I tried it out today on Ray Miller, but it wasn't very successful. Poor fella can't write? Father. Well, you sound as if something went wrong. It goes back to last week. Ray said he'd take me to the basketball game this Friday night. No problem there. Then during lunch period today, he wrote me a note. And you analyzed his handwriting? Yes. And the analysis didn't work out so well? Oh, yes, it worked. Betty... According to Ray's style of writing, he's romantic and extremely affectionate. That's bad? No, that's good. Well... But in the note he wrote me, he said he was taking Ann Kramer to the game. <laughs> And that could be quite a blow, especially after the way he analyzed. Betty, can we please set the table? Hey, Dad! Sounds like the boy Wonder is home. Dad! I told Bud time and again not to stand outside and shout like that. Dad! Mom! Yes, Bud! Come on out and back for a second, will you? All right, but for goodness sakes, keep your voice down. Come on, Margaret. Look, Dad, how do you like it? <gasps> the motor scooter! <laughs> Isn't she a honey? But how in the world did you... Well, Mr. Hartley brought the scooter home for Freddie, but Freddie's mother wouldn't let him keep it. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine a thing like that? Yes, I can imagine a thing like that. <laughs> and you know that $10 you gave me, Dad? Don't tell me you got it for $10. No. Oh. Benny Thompson made the deal, and I went 50-50 with him. Why are you all looking at me so funny? Nothing. Continue. Well, Mr. Hartley let Benny have the scooter for the exact amount that he paid for it. Oh? Just think. Some knucklehead sold this keen scooter to Mr. Hartley for only $20. <laughs> Who do you suppose would do a silly thing like that? I can't imagine. <laughs>
With so many makes of television on the market, how can you tell which is best? These important facts about Crosley automatic television can help you decide. You see, Crosley sets the pace with television that's five ways automatic. See if any other set can match these five leadership features. With Crosley, even distant stations automatically come in clear and strong. Locked-in picture automatically stays rock steady. Permaclear picture automatically stays virtually free of electrical disturbances. Dual built-in antenna automatically adjusts to the channel you select. And when the picture's right, the sound's right. Yes, Crosley gives you the brightest, clearest, steadiest picture you've ever watched and does it automatically. Once you've seen and compared Crosley's outstanding performance and authentic cabinet styling, now at the biggest savings in TV history, you'll be convinced that here's the finest television, priced to make you doubly happy. Dinner is a thing of the past at the White Frame House on Maple Street. The younger Andersons have gone their way, while Jim and Margaret, who are still at the table, sit leisurely back and enjoy a quiet second cup of coffee. Another piece of cake, Jim? No, thanks. You know something, Margaret? You're wonderful. Careful, Jim. Don't lose your head. I mean about the scooter, letting Bud keep it. <laughs> oh. He's really living. Well, I guess the way everything turned out... He was meant to have it. It'll be a wonderful experience for him. And that partnership isn't a bad idea either. Bud needs to know a little about sharing something with somebody else. Not that he doesn't do it at home, but here it's sort of forced on him. And as I mentioned before, he can use the added responsibility. It becomes a regular little business venture. It'll uh, sharpen him up. Say, Dad. Yes, Bud? Can I have a dollar for gas? <laughs> <laughs> a dollar for gas? This new gadget, Jim, doesn't run by rubber bands. All right. Here you are. Oh, yeah, and I'll need another dollar to get the taillight fixed. It's broken? It was that way when we got it, and you have to have a taillight. It's the law. Okay, if you have to have it. Here you are. Say, just a minute. What's the matter? I understood that this was a partnership. It is. Then how about your friend Benny putting up his half? Oh, but it doesn't work that way, Dad. What do you mean? You each own half the scooter, don't you? Yeah, but the half I own has the tail light in the gas tank. <laughs> My boy. <laughs> What happens when an electronic engineer teams up with an interior decorator to brighten your radio listening? Crosley color-style radios are the happy result. Engineered to bring in stations near and far without blasting or fading, these colorful beauties are outstanding for their full, rich tone quality. Crosley color-style radios come in a wide selection of color combinations and sizes. There's one just right for every room in your home. See Crosley's lovely color style radios at your Crosley dealer tomorrow. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargie's orchestra. In our cast were Gene Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and Norma Jean Nielsen. So until next week at this same time, good night and good luck from the Crosley Division of the Avco Manufacturing Corporation, America's leading manufacturer of today's pace-setting refrigerators, television and radio sets, electric ranges, home freezers, and many other products for happier living. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Dick Conway. The proceeding was transcribed. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, brings you mystery tonight on NBC.